welcome to new discussion of uh, this remote sensing essential course and today we are going to discuss uh, the advantages and disadvantages. There are always some disadvantages with the everything. Uh, so, we will be also discussing limitations of high spatial resolution satellite images. As you know that uh, everyone many times is looking for high spatial resolution satellite images, uh, but uh, there are always uh, some limitations uh, with the high spatial resolution satellite images. So, first uh, what we are going to discuss uh, basically the advantages or benefits of uh, going for high spatial resolution satellite images and uh, then we will see that uh, what are the limitations and why I am saying that uh, it is disadvantageous for certain type of applications. So, um, uh, if we if we look the uh, biggest advantage of uh, high spatial resolution remote sensing images or satellite images that uh, it uh, allows us uh, for uh, you know looking things in much more detail. That is the advantage which we see they are offering huge, adva huge advantage in, the, in the study of uh, land use change when we are having high spatial resolution images. Uh, precision farming is a new thing which is coming up uh, including in India where uh, not only high spatial resolution satellite images are being used, but also in precision farming for giving fertilizers or spreading insecticide, pesticides uh, and these uh, drones are also being used along with the GNSS uh, technology. So, there also uh, these high resolution satellite images are very much required. In emergency responses uh, like uh, if uh, some earthquake has occurred or landslide or flooding and uh, then uh, pinpointing uh, you know the location where people have got affected or the house has got damage and uh, then providing uh, the help or uh, uh, providing emergency services to such locations is only possible through high spatial resolution images. So, it facilitates basically a very accurate uh, and uh, reliable and sometimes also timely data and uh, this point uh, timely data which we will discuss further in terms of temporal resolution and uh, also for uh, social research uh, where house based research is required individual based uh, required then high spatial resolution satellite images uh, becomes very advantageous. And uh, also in many other applied fields and I would like to mention uh, very recently which has been uh, in, in which uh, uh, high spatial resolution satellite images have been used is in when uh, you know the in the defense when targets are set uh, to guided missiles like it has happened in case of uh, Balakot strike by India, Indian Air Force and they used very georeferenced high spatial resolution satellite images and these images have guided uh, uh, these spy, uh, spice uh, uh, weapons or spice missiles. Uh, to hit the target and uh, wherever uh, because uh, these were images were of very high spatial resolution. So, the target can be fixed whether it is a corner of a building or a center of the rooftop or whatever. So, to that extent uh, high uh, spatial resolution satellite images uh, can be used. Of course, it provides lot of advantages in many disciplines, but not in all. As we know that a spatial resolution uh, plays al along with all other resolutions play very important role for certain number of applications and especially related to characterization of complex environment and uh, that too in uh, urban situations, maybe in a uh, dense urban zones or to detection and recognition of uh, small targets and that in that way high spatial resolution satellite images can play very very important crucial role. And uh, uh, in such a remote sensing products the, that means uh, high spatial resolution images uh, can be very expensive sometimes and difficult to acquire and difficult to acquire means uh, what happens that when you go for higher spatial resolution satellite images the swath width 
per orbit reduces and therefore in order to cover a large area you require uh, you know many orbits data or many swath data and therefore it uh, may become expensive in for certain applications. So this uh, also prohibits uh, or reduces uh, their use in uh, some applications. For example, I am seeing uh, relatively high spatial resolution satellite images versus low resolution satellite images. On uh, our uh, on the right side what we are seeing a sentinel 2 satellite image having a spatial resolution of 10 meter and for the same area uh, this is a 50 centimeter uh, spatial resolution that means 0.5 meter spatial resolution uh, satellite image from uh, Pleiades satellite is there. As you can uh, when while comparing you can uh, see that uh, uh, the Play uh, play uh, satellite image provides a very detailed uh, information um, or having detailed content uh, as compared to Sentinel-2 satellite image. So, but uh, um, if, if we compare the size of image in terms of computer memory then definitely it will have many times a requirement for size of memory and a repetitivity may be also relatively less in case of high spatial that means the temporal resolution. Nonetheless, the details it provides the sharpness in the image which it provides is uncomparable uh, with uh, even 10 meter or 5 meter satellite images. So, if applications which really requires a very high resolution satellite images then one has to um, one has to use them. The, the best part here is nowadays even 50 centimeter, 40 centimeter uh, uh, spatial resolution satellite images are available for almost all parts of the globe. And uh, therefore, um, the options of using high spatial resolution satellite images for certain applications are available for us. And uh, we will be seeing some uh, commonly used uh, sensors. And, uh, and their comparison uh, with the high spatial resolution, coarse resolution and, and we will see that what are the advantages and limitations simultaneously. For example, if I take a relatively coarse resolution satellite image uh, which is uh, from the uh, polder uh, satellite which is having uh, band uh, B1 to 9 bands and uh, then you are the spatial resolution here is 6 kilometer that means 600, 6000 meter and the radiometric resolution of the data is 12 meter. Temporal resolution that means it can come uh, almost every fourth day uh, and revisit the same area. But when we compare with moderate resolution satellite images like from MODIS or AVHR because of uh, polder and now we can call MODIS and AVHR as course uh, as moderate resolution if we uh, because we talk in terms of a relative sense. So, uh, when we do not have the polder in discussion then we would be calling MODIS or AVHR as a course resolution. Nonetheless, uh, MODIS is having uh, 36 channel data. So, when 1, 2, uh, when 2 are having visible channels uh, which are 250 meter then uh, few channels are devoted for 500 meters of spatial resolution and thermal channels uh, are having uh, 1000 meter that is 1 kilometer. Radiometric resolution remains same as compared to the polder uh, set, uh, sensor, but the advantage with MODIS is that uh, the images are available on daily basis. So, that every, every day the same area can be visited because uh, there are two satellites in tandem. And Terra and Equa and which provides the advantage of uh, reducing this temporal resolution uh, and uh, then therefore, it is possible uh, to uh, uh, get the data for every day of any part of the globe. And uh, then we are uh, seeing AVHRR which is having 5 channels, 3 channels works in night time, 5 channels works in daytime, and it is uh, about 1.1 kilometer uh, resolution at Nadir. Uh, because it, it is the swath is uh, about 2800 kilometer and therefore, it covers a very large area and therefore, 
uh, the curvature of the earth also plays very important role. That is why it has mentioned that uh, at Nadir, at the, uh, the center of the scene, the spatial resolution is 1.1 kilometer or 1100 meter. Uh, of course, it provides the data on daily basis and the data is uh, uh, 10 bits uh, radiometric resolution data is available from this. So, these are the examples of relatively coarse resolution and medium resolution. Now, since we are discussing high spatial resolution satellite images, so we will have some uh, examples of sensors and high spatial resolution uh, like uh, EOI or ALI uh, 1 or Terra or uh, Aster, better known as uh, Aster. And uh, the resolution is available for one channel B1 band 115, then 30, then 90. This is this is also becoming very common nowadays that uh, on one platform, that means on one satellite, we are having uh, you know a sensor which is working at different spatial resolutions uh, against different part of EM spectrum. For example, here in the visible part 15 meter, which is possible. But in, uh, in infrared or near infrared part, we are having 30 meter. And then when we go for the thermal infrared, then we are having a 90 meter spatial resolution. And uh, the radiometric resolution in case of uh, between B1 to B9, we are having 8 bits. And whereas uh, uh, when we go for uh, B11 to B14, then we are having uh, 12 bits uh, data. Generally, this is also a common thing that when a spatial resolution is relatively coarser, the radiometric resolution uh, is better uh, because in order to grab those kind of details by the sensor. Now, ETM plus that is on the lens set uh, 7 or OLI in lens set 8, uh, we are having the panchromatic channels are having 15 meter, then B1 to B5 and 7 uh, and that is uh, excluding B6, B6 is thermal channel where we are having 60 meter. So, B1 to B5 and B7, 30 meter. Radiometric resolution is 8 bits, which is most common radiometric resolution in most of the satellite images. But if we are going for coarser resolution, uh, spatial resolution, then generally this may increase up to even 12. Then a spot example is there, again in pen 2.5 to 5 meter. B1 and to B3 is uh, 10 meter and then uh, short wave infrared is uh, 20 meter spatial resolution. But this uh, radiometric resolution remains same throughout and that is 8 bit. These are uh, since then what uh, so like uh, spot since uh, 2002 this data is available. And uh, temporal resolution if we see for ETM uh, plus that means lens set 7. And the, it, the temporal resolution was 16 days and, uh, and generally this is how the lens set programs have been designed either 16 or 18 days. And uh, whereas uh, since we have gone for relatively higher spatial resolution compared to lens set instead of 15 meter now we are having 2.5 meter and the point which I have mentioned uh, that uh, if you go for higher spatial resolution the temporal resolution reduces and therefore it has become 26 days. So, uh, only a narrow swath one would have uh, in each uh, uh, orbit and therefore, in order to revisit the same part, it will require many days to come back. So, in this case, uh, 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 26 days. Uh, if we bring everything versus spatial resolution versus uh, image coverage or one can also say a swath. Then uh, let us let us take example of lens set MSS. Uh, so, a lens set MSS uh, will cover uh, in one go in one scene rather uh, 185 by 185 kilometer. So, it is a quite large coverage by lens set MSS and TM sensors. But when we go for say a spot which we have just discussed, then the, the scene will cover only 60 kilometer by 60 kilometer. So, you, you can realize that uh, it has uh, um, on both uh, extent or both directions it is one third roughly. And therefore, the uh, temporal resolution will reduce accordingly and that is what we have seen here that in case of land side it is when it is uh, 16 days and that has gone to 26 days. 
so uh, uh, higher the spatial resolution uh, sm uh, smaller the swath width and uh, therefore uh, your uh, temporal resolution is also very less if we are having high spatial resolution so this is uh, what we can say the disadvantage of going for high spatial resolution see all the time for all the application it is not good to go for high spatial resolution if a work doesn't require that much of detailed information about the ground or surface of the earth then one should not resort to high spatial resolution though the data set might be available because the data handling would be exponential if my work can be done using say landsat mss or tm then why i should go for a spot because then i have to handle more data sets in this case maybe 9 times more and uh, i end of the day the the results which i have to produce at a particular scale that uh, it is not a large scale i have to produce on a smaller scale therefore why i should go for high spatial resolution satellite image so all applications in all fields do not require high spatial resolution data so one should choose very judiciously if it is really required for that particular application then definitely one should resort for high spatial resolution otherwise uh, a optimum spatial resolution should be assessed that which one is most suitable and that because now choices are available from you know 6 km to 60 cm the full range of uh, spatial resolution satellite images are available so uh, if i am uh, covering a continent or a large part of the country then i should not go for very high spatial resolution images and uh, if uh, my a study area is very small and i want very detailed information about my study area then obviously i would go for high spatial resolution and uh, we compare uh, with this landsat and uh, spot in between we see also the irs 1c so irs 1c covers uh, one scene will cover about 70 km by 70 km area and uh, there are some others uh, like uh, jers uh, also which will cover 75 by 75 km so the size of the scene that means the ground coverage would depend on the spatial resolution that means the higher the spatial resolution lower the ground coverage the uh, sensor would have and uh, lower the uh, uh, you know uh, your uh, relatively lower the spatial resolution or coarser the spatial resolution larger the ground coverage it would have one more uh, point which we can bring about the iconos see iconos is having a spatial resolution of 1 meter and uh, therefore and uh, see compared to landsat uh, which is covering a 185 by 185 km area iconos sensor will cover only 11 km by 11 km so the swath width is just 11 km in case of landsat uh, mss and tm the swath width is 185 km so almost 18.5 uh, times uh, coverage uh, which is being provided by landsat but if my work requires high spatial resolution satellite images then i have to use but my coverage area would be very very little compared to landsat similarly when we see for other other bands or other uh, sensors like for this is about the example of uh, thermal bands so in case of landsat tm band 6 which is thermal band the spatial resolution is 120 meter but when we go Uh, for uh, other bands like visible or near infrared in case of landsat mss then spatial resolution is 80 meter but when we go for landsat tm band 5 excluding band 7 band 6 sorry thermal band then i am having a spatial resolution of 30 meter so uh, the spatial resolution will also depend on the pa on which part of em spectrum a band or range of bands are representing generally high spatial resolution satellite images are available only for visible part of em spectrum but when we move towards say right direction and towards the thermal infrared part then spatial resolution will reduce and uh, the, this is the example here that in case of landsat tm uh, these in, uh, visible and infrared channels are providing spatial resolution 
30 meter whereas uh, thermal channel is providing 120 meter. Uh, same with the say IRS-1C this is typical panchromatic sensor 5.8 meter spatial resolution and uh, when we uh, iconos which just 1 meter resolution and then of course the area of coverage is going to be less. So, what, what we observed at this stage that uh, uh, coarser the spatial resolution we can cover even thermal part of EM spectrum. But when we go for higher spatial resolution then we are restricted mainly to the visible or near infrared part of EM spectrum. Just comparison of three uh, sensors or three satellites uh, uh, sensors data one is the Sentinel-2, another one is the Landsat-8 which is a new and OLI series it is also called OLI series and then Worldview-3 uh, three, uh, Worldview three, uh, is there that is the satellite. Now when we see the swath width that the width of the scene if you, if you wish to call then swath width is 290 kilometer in case of uh, Sentinel-2 data and a spatial resolution is maximum up to 10 meter. But when we go for a, a Landsat 8, the swath width, uh, though it has been designed like this, the swath width is, has reduced, but a spatial resolution uh, has gone more coarser. And uh, when we go for the world view, the swath width is quite close to um, your uh, Iconos, which is 11 kilometer in this uh, world, uh, world view 3 case, it is 13.1 kilometer, and the resolution has gone up to 31 centimeter. 31 centimeter spatial resolution means that you can record or you can see the variations on even on the rooftop. So, if there is some layering or surface on the rooftop of a building, if there are variations, those variations can also be recorded by these sensors if they are having resolution of 0.31 uh, meter that means the 31 centimeter a foot almost a foot. And uh, uh, do uh, in particular in a particular application if those kind of details are required then one should resort one should use such high very high spatial resolution satellite images. But if it is not required then one should not go because otherwise it will cover a very small swath or uh, the scene size is going to be just 13 kilometer. So, if I want to cover a say large city metro city like Delhi then I would be requiring thousands of scenes to cover the entire Delhi. Whether my application required that kind of high resolution satellite image or that kind of detailing that means I want to see even the variation in the each uh, rooftop then only I should go otherwise uh, and, and that much is not required. One more comparison about the swath width. If we start for, uh, with the NOAA AVHRR or MODIS, and NOAA AVHRR is about having about 2800 kilometer swath width, MODIS is having about 2048 kilometer swath width. Of course, the spatial resolution in case of MODIS uh, at different parts of EM spectrum or in different bands is 250 meter. 500 meter and 1 kilometer, 1 kilometer that is in TIR that is in thermal infrared. So, it covers a very large area in one orbit, in one go, in one scene, but at a coarser resolution. If com uh, com uh, comparison to you no know, AVHRR, if we go for the Iconos, the spatial resolution is 1 meter, then you can realize that the swath width is just 11 and this is and this is not as per the scale which you are seeing from uh, 2048 or 2800 kilometer to 11 kilometer. This is not per as a scale, but just representing uh, the swath width. And uh, here it is just 11 kilometer. So, compared to 2000 kilometer swath width versus roughly say 10 kilometer swath width. So, that means the more coverage, many, many uh, multiple times of scenes. Uh, will be required if I want to cover that much of area uh, by using high spatial resolution satellite images say at 1 meter resolution. And in between we are having Landsat 7 uh, which covers 185 kilometer uh, swath and then IRS uh, which is uh, very well designed uh, 146 kilometer and resolution is uh, 36 meter and also 
a different sensor is having 72 that is list 2. And uh, then of course we do not have thermal channel here visible infrared and near infrared and uh, other calibrations are other thing spot if we look the spot, a spot provides 10 meter and 20 meter resolution you move towards uh, you know uh, uh, on the right side say on the EM spectrum uh, for uh, then we, we go for coarser and coarser spatial resolution. And uh, of course, uh, the, when we compare the temporal resolution in case of uh, uh, these satellites, we may have daily and uh, daily or in 2 days, uh, in Landsat 16 days, in IRS 22 days temporal resolution, in a spot it is 26 days and uh, uh, Iconos and other things many, many days are required, uh, maybe 40 days, 48 days after that only. So, if 2 adjacent scenes have to be mosaic, then by that time the, the you know the vegetation may show some changes, ground features may show some changes and the mosaicing also uh, become very, very uh, difficult. Mm. And now, uh, in, the, in a different way we can also compare on the y axis we are having the spatial resolution in meters and uh, here we are having the swath and that is in uh, kilometers. So, uh, Landsat is located here and that means the spatial resolution we are talking about Landsat TM of about 30 meter and then if we compare with this is the quick word where spatial resolution is about uh, a meter or even uh, 60 centimeter and so even less than a meter it is about 60 centimeter and rest are in between including our IRS uh, P5 quick word is also uh, near uh, uh, you know near 5 meters shown here uh, Iconos of course 1 meter quick word is also in that then we are having Allos Pulsar IRS 1C 1C 1D and uh, a spot is also located here spot 4, spot 5 and so on and so forth. So, more you go uh, towards the uh, uh, top right in this figure uh, sorry top left in this figure. Uh, you are finding newer and newer satellites are getting position there. That means they are going for higher and higher spatial resolution, but uh, same time they are going for lower and lower swath width. And this is what uh, this figure uh, basically depicts. So, uh, say basically uh, whenever some application is there in front of us, we first assess what should be the optimum spatial resolution and what I want. If it is chain detection based uh, study or chain detection study, then what repeatability I want and accordingly uh, a satellite sensor should be chosen rather than just going for higher and higher spatial resolution satellite images. Now, there are uh, some other uh, uh, characteristics which uh, we like a quick word which we have just seen that it provides a 60 centimeter or 61 centimeter spatial resolution. Uh, for some bands, it also, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, generally in the panchromatic band uh, can provide a higher spatial resolution as in case of I, Iconos 0.8 or roughly we say 1 meter, word view 0.5 meter. And then GOI is having 1.4 meter, 1.6 meter higher spatial resolution. So, these are quite close to each other and lot of options from Iconos, QuickBird, WordView, uh, 1, 2, 3 and uh, GOI are all available. Uh, repeat or uh, temporal resolution and uh, 3 days, 1 to 3.5 days, 1 to 1.7 to 1.5.9 days and 2.1 to 8.3 days. So, if we make as integer values then 3 days, 1 day, 1 to 3 days and roughly 2 days or 3 days and so on and so forth. And uh, since when the data is available that information is also here. So, like GUI 1 only from 2008 onward we are having the data. If we see now uh, our own program that is Indian satellites program. Uh, of course, the Indian remote sensing satellite program uh, started uh, way back, but uh, the uh, real operational satellites uh, started or the data became available since 17th March uh, to, uh, to 1988 after the launch of IRS 1A. 
and so we will be comparing our own program against uh, different uh, uh, satellites of ISRO. So, if I see IRS 1A and 1B, of course, both uh, had the same characteristics. So, first uh, IRS, a, IRS 1A was launched and when it became very successful, then uh, the, the duplicate which we had on the earth was also sent in after 3 years in, in 1991 and uh, it also worked uh, in the same way. So, it, uh, the temporal resolution in IRS 1A and 1B because the sensors, satellite, everything were same. So, it uh, was uh, 22 days. However, they were for long time in tandem. That means, uh, the spatial resolution reduced to even 11 days. So, that way it was designed and launched and it worked for uh, several years in tandem also, two satellites in tandem. The swath width in case of IRS 1A and 1V was 148. Uh, kilometer and uh, when then we came into another series that is IRS uh, P2 series and uh, that was launched in 1994 and though these satellites IRS 1A 1B worked for uh, longer time. So, we had a uh, overlapping periods uh, between IRS 1A 1B and uh, P2. IRS uh, uh, this has the sensor list 2. IRS 1A, 1B had a sensor list 1 and list 2. Here we had only the list 2 and there were 4 bands just like IRS 1A list 1 and uh, uh, this uh, the spatial resolution was about uh, 32 meter and uh, the swath width uh, was uh, uh, very less compared to IRS 1A, 1B that is 66 kilometer and uh, repeat cycle was also less it was uh, 24 because when you go for higher spatial resolution obviously uh, the repeat cycle or temporal resolution will reduce accordingly. If we look the IRS 1C program then it was uh, launched in December uh, 90, 1995. It has a new sensor which is list 3 became very popular sensor and uh, provided uh, data at 23.5 meter resolution for very long time. Of course, it has the panchromatic sensor that was providing data as 5.8 meter resolution, but that is in the visible part of EM spectrum. Swath width uh, was 70 meter, uh, whereas list 3 had the swath width of 142 uh, kilometer to 1.48 kilometer and repeat cycle of course, was 24 days. Uh, it also had one more sensor uh, that uh, a WIF sensor and uh, that had a swath of uh, 804 kilometer, but uh, the same time spectra, uh, spatial resolution was 188 kilometer and they, therefore, the repeat cycle was only 5 days. So, as you can again see here that uh, if a spatial resolution is poor, swath width is very large, repeat uh, repetitivity or temporal resolution is very small. So, this is what it uh, describes here. Again, uh, uh, there are uh, examples of our Indian program that list 4 is also there, list 3 example is there, AWIFs also there and uh, corresponding swath width and uh, spatial resolutions have been mentioned. Like uh, here, AWIFs 56 meter, this is list 3 uh, 23.5 meter and list 4 had uh, 5.8 meter. So, if we compare say uh, list 4 which was covering a very small uh, swath uh, uh, at high resolution uh, like uh, here, then uh, uh, in case of AWIFs it was covering a very large area of this much swath. So, this is a swath of a uh, list 4 and this is the swath of a AWIFs. So, it definitely it covers a large area and a list 3 was covering have a swath width of 141 kilometer. And uh, there were few more satellites uh, after IRS uh, uh, P3, P2 and uh, that is P3 is also there and 96 it was launched and uh, then things keep uh, keep changing like here the resolution at 188 kilometer swath width 84, 804 kilometer repeat cycle was 5 and uh, there were 3 sensors on IRS uh, P3 
uh, some uh, new type of sensors the X-ray, X-ray astronomy experiment was also conducted through this uh, uh, satellite that is IRS uh, uh, P3 and uh, for also dedicated sensor was there that is MOS A, B, C bands were there uh, for ocean surface. So, for which you do not require very high spatial resolution data. So, 1500 meter spatial 520 and 550 at different bands against different bands we are available from IRS P3. When we go for IRS P4 that is also called the Ocean Set 1 it was launched in 99 and uh, this was basically dedicated for uh, studies related with the oceans or seas or water and therefore and uh, the swath width was much higher much bigger the spatial resolution was relatively coarser and therefore you also had repeat cycle. So, every second day the purpose of that satellite, the design of the satellite was that, that uh, it should provide data on alternate day. So, therefore, there were compromise with the spatial resolution and by if you compromise or go for coarser spatial resolution, you get uh, the uh, uh, you know broad swath width. If we go for IRS P6 also called as resource set 1. It was launched in 2003. It has three sensors, list 4, list 3, and A waves. And uh, the swath widths, uh, if we see, 70 kilometer, 140 kilometer, and 740 kilometer. Whereas resolution, spatial resolution is just uh, in inverse, uh, that is, in list 4, we had a 5.8 meter resolution, a multi spectral bands against multi spectral bands. In list 3, 23.5 meter resolution for 4 bands and A waves was 70 meter. And when we compare uh, the repetitivity, of course, uh, when you are having high uh, coarser spatial resolution, the temporal resolution was much higher that is 5 days in case of A waves. And uh, when we go for higher spatial resolution that means 5.8 meter in against the list 4, then repetitivity or temporal resolution was 24 days. Uh, it was possible to steer the image, so it can be acquired after 5 days also. So, in that way uh, there is, uh, then then also IRS uh, P5 that is all called quarto set 1, uh, very high spatial resolution 2.5 meter, swath width reduces further and uh, it is a, a repeated we see 2 line stereo camera was uh, there. And then uh, Carto set 2, Carto Ocean set 2 were also launched, and uh, these values uh, kept uh, changing in that one. And there are some other uh, sensors which we quickly we will cover here. Uh, one is the which was in the radar, the SAR instrument, synthetic aperture radar instrument was there in case of RISE set, and uh, the spectral bands, of course, uh, it worked only on the C band generally. Uh, radar satellites will work on a single band either on C band or X band and uh, spatial resolution uh, ranges between point about 2, 2 meter to 50 meter and swath base was 100 meter to 600 meter because it is not nadir beam in that sense. And uh, uh, then there are some other programs uh, mega tropics and uh, saral uh, they were there uh, which uh, which never became as popular as our IRS uh, series or Carto set series. If we bring uh, most of these satellites together uh, on this uh, sort of x y plot spatial resolution versus swath width and uh, then we what we see that uh, in case of ALOS also is a Japanese satellite also called Daichi and then you are swath width is 70 kilometer but the spatial resolution is 2.5 and 2.5 meter. And uh, when uh, uh, go for uh, say uh, world view 3 and uh, then or world view 3 or world view 2, then you are having swath width is all about 11 to 12 kilometer and whereas spatial resolution is less than half meter that means uh, about uh, 30 centimeter. So, here we are uh, in this one we are talking about uh, spatial resolution 2.5 meter to uh, uh, you know 0.3 meter or 31.31 1 um, meter. So, again lot of satellites the uh, Pleiades uh, we have discussed, Iconos we have discussed 
and there are some other quick word we have discussed world view 1 2 3 GOI all these are there and many many such satellites are getting concentrated in this uh, top part or in the left corner where the, re the swath width is getting reduced and high spatial resolution. So, on the spatial resolution front it is gaining but on the swath width it is losing. Main, one important point also here and uh, though uh, against different countries they are shown but it is not necessarily like it is shown for US that does not mean that it is these all are being have been launched or are being maintained by NASA. And there are now private companies are also uh, coming like space imaging or other companies which have launched their uh, own satellite space imaging launch Iconos and then quick word and others. So, there are now private companies which are moving towards higher and higher spatial resolution satellite images, but very costly if we compare with the say IRS data uh, maybe list 3 or list 4, list 4 5.6 meter spatial resolution data, but uh, comparing the cost the enormous difference is there uh, with the satellites which have been launched by private companies of uh, say US or some other countries. Uh, when we compare with this again uh, like uh, PLED is uh, here 20 kilometer swath width uh, by 1.5 kilometer. So, 20 kilometer is the length or that the, uh, the swath and the width is just 1.5 kilometer whereas, it provides a uh, high spatial resolution data same way world view then advanced optical sensors and there are many many such uh, sensors are there uh, which covers the data. Now, as uh, we have seen that there are trade offs uh, uh, between spatial resolution, spectral resolution and temporal resolution uh, among the satellite images and they, these uh, there are there are relationships one can one we must have realized by now and uh, that are a function of data uh, transfer bandwidth uh, because ultimately if we are acquiring data at a very high spatial resolution and uh, the satellite remain in contact with the ground station for very little time then the transfer data transfer uh, bandwidth has to be accordingly or rate has to be accordingly. And uh, 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 you know if we go for fixed bandwidth and uh, then a lot of other things have to be uh, compromised or handled uh, that may be on the front of a spatial resolution or that may be on the front of temporal resolution. So, this um, left figure on one axis uh, this is a triangle uh, trade off uh, between spatial, spectral and temporal resolution. So, we uh, when we go for high spatial resolution uh, we go for uh, you know uh, the a uh, lower bandwidth and uh, uh, we more go towards the visible part of EM spectrum and, uh, and therefore, uh, you know uh, 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 the you reach only in mainly in the panchromatic uh, sensors. But when you go for coarser spatial resolution then you can cover a large part of your EM spectrum including your thermal part or TIR. So, this is trade off between spatial resolution and spectral resolution. But when we see the uh, three spatial resolution, spectral resolution and temporal resolution then what we will see that if uh, I go for very high spatial resolution my temporal resolution reduces. But if I go for low spatial resolution my temporal resolution that means even I can have images on every day a daily basis is possible with relatively coarser spatial resolution maybe I when I go for this my spectral resolution may be uh, or my spectral resolution or bands which are available may be much higher. So, there is a uh, trade off between spatial resolution, spectral resolution, temporal resolution, but basically it indicates uh, what is the basically outcome of uh, this uh, discussion is that the lot of choices of uh, satellite data is uh, now available to us and uh, these uh, choices are uh, uh, if de it depends on our applications. If I am looking for 
high temporal resolution data that means I want data from satellites on daily basis then I cannot go for high spatial resolution satellite images because the swath width is very little with high spatial resolution. But coarser spatial resolution data swath width is very wide maybe 2800 kilometer and therefore it is possible to acquire data not even every day but uh, twice in a day one in night time and one in daytime. But when we go in night time then we have to use only uh, the infrared part uh, or thermal infrared part and therefore the spatial resolution may further reduce. So, these are the compromises one has to make while choosing the satellite data. Higher spatial resolution is not the solution for all the applications. This is the main point which I want to bring here. So, in, in, uh, in conclusion almost uh, what we see the limitations uh, indirectly we have touched but in uh, to for completeness uh, we will go one by one. The limitation of high spatial resolution uh, data is that the footprint the swath generally is very narrow. The temporal resolution is also poor but of course as a trade off so you get a high spatial resolution images. So, swath bit reduces temporal resolution reduces but you gain on front of spatial resolution. Problems of cloud fog etc. if large area has to be covered this example I have given that if I am using say Iconos data my swath bit is just 11 kilometer and my cover area is say 200 kilometer that means I have to use several orbital data or several uh, you know orbits data and that means uh, that I uh, during that time because the repeatability is poor. Uh, temporal resolution is poor. So, by that time it comes to the next adjacent scene or next scene I would uh, might be having that area might be having and uh, change different atmospheric conditions clouds fog or other things and therefore, making mosaic of uh, high spatial resolution data is equally very challenging. So, one has to remember this part and this is again hugely underutilized due to high cost. And uh, once I had interaction with the uh, space imaging uh, executive and uh, I asked a question in a conference and uh, that uh, how much data which you are acquiring through your sensor is being utilized or being purchased by the people world over. And uh, answer uh, by that executive was only roughly 2 percent. So, 98 percent of the data uh, in high spatial resolution of high uh, spatial resolution satellite images is going just in archives because the cost is enormous when we go for very high resolution say uh, 31 centimeter data and that means a uh, huge cost and therefore huge underutilized data because of high cost and uh, of course expensive uh, if I have to cover a large area then it requires lot of resources to cover that area. So, as I have been saying the best thing is first assess and uh, what the output I am intending or envisaged what is going to be the detail or scale of my outputs and accordingly appropriate data sets should be chosen appropriate satellite data sets should be chosen of a the particular resolution. So, that uh, I struck a uh, optimization um, uh, between high spatial resolution and cost and other things. And if there is lot of gap between two adjacent scenes in case of high spatial resolution data which is highly possible which is a, is a regular case then the uh, shadow that means the solar elevation angle may also change in two adjacent scenes and therefore, uh, the mosaicing of such images becomes very very difficult. So, that is shadow over other objects also creates in high spatial resolution data that also creates a big problem. If you are having big building along with a small uh, buildings then big building may cover many buildings of a smaller heights in under the shadow. So, that is another and some other uh, limitations of high spatial resolution satellite images difficult to acquire sometimes due to security reasons. This, uh, the agencies or the company is regularly collecting or acquiring data from satellite and putting in archive. But when we want to buy 
uh, or acquire from uh, purchase from these uh, agencies or companies then we find difficult because they are not allowed to sell the data just like that because of high spatial resolution so security reasons will prevail and it will it will be basically block uh, uh, block the acquisition of such high spatial resolution data this is a big issue in, in in including in india when we go for high spatial resolution data so that is another limitation uh, another constraint with high res, uh, spatial resolution data and generally as i have been also mentioning that generally very high spatial resolution and data sets are available in panchromatic mo uh, mode um, mainly representing the visible, visible part of em spectrum and uh, uh, you know like 0.4 uh, micrometer and 2.6.7 uh, micrometer only in that part of em spectrum uh, the band will be available or data will be available so there is a compromise with the spectral resolution as well the band width of panchromatic Uh, bands are much wider as compared to multispectral bands and uh, long term time series data sets are not available uh, because uh, high spatial resolution uh, satellites generally they may not be at uh, 850 km and depth in space they may be at lower depth and therefore their life cycle of such satellite may be less and therefore uh, there is a no continuity is available so if i am looking for a long term time series data for change detection studies then it may not uh, work and, and geo referencing is a problem of high spatial resolution data due to non availability of highly accurate uh, ground control points and uh, if uh, i am i have to geo reference a very high spatial resolution say 31 or even 1 meter spatial resolution satellite image then i require very accurate ground control points and these i mean very accurate ground control points that means they have to come through differential and uh, gnss campaign and that means again cost so it will add further in cost so this brings to the end of uh, this uh, discussion about uh, high space advantages with high spatial resolution uh, satellite data sets uh, their availability and of course uh, in last uh, and uh, we have also discussed in detail about the limitations of high spatial resolution satellite images so this brings to the end of this discussion thank you very much